Josh, I want to welcome you to the show and uh, just uh, give us a little bit of your background, a little bit of uh, where you come from and, and what your uh, expertise is. Sure. Thanks, Jamie. So I am a, an internal medicine specialist and a critical care medicine specialist. I uh, finished my residency a number of years ago and I was invited to be a visiting scholar uh, a, one year later. Uh, at Stanford University where I studied with the Department of Medicine how uh, medical learners, specifically medical students and residents, how they're using their smartphones to, to access new medical knowledge. Cool. So, so uh, one of the things that we did was that we did a series of surveys and we also looked to see what resources were available online. And when I got back from that post in the fall, I met with some friends of mine, one of whom is an iPhone developer. And we got to talking about the idea for Figure One, which would eventually become a photo sharing platform for all healthcare professionals. The idea of which was there's a concept in medicine called uh, the teaching file, which is a collection of images that uh, teachers would collect to show their students because they were particularly remarkable or memorable or classic. And what we wanted to do was take that uh, teaching moment. Um, and provide that kind of opportunity to every healthcare professional, um, no matter how senior or junior. Because as you and other healthcare professionals definitely know, once you're not the most junior member of the team, you are now teaching the most junior yeah. member of the team. That's true. Yeah, and, and it's amazing really to think about it. I mean, I almost, um, I downloaded the app and took a look at it and it, it's full of amazing images already. I mean, I know it's a relatively new development out there, but um, it's already being used and utilized in a lot of different ways. And I almost think of it as kind of an Instagram with privacy concerns taken care of and HIPAA concerns here in the United States mm -hmm. kind of covered. Um, tell us a little bit about how uh, uh, somebody can manage that if they're taking a picture of a patient or an injury or, or uh, um, something in, in a healthcare setting. What are some of the tools built into the app that uh, help them protect the patient's privacy? So we, uh, just while you're on it, I will mention that we put a lot of time and effort and research into our uh, privacy tools. And in fact, uh, when we were developing the app, the app was ready months before the legal work was ready. So we had to wait before everything was okay because uh, we didn't want to rush it. We knew that, especially in this field, uh, during these times, privacy is more important uh, to patients than uh, anything that they could provide. Uh, to a healthcare professional. So making sure the patients were safe was our top priority. Uh, that said, what we did was we uh, provide all the tools that are necessary to totally remove all the privacy aspects from any image. So what that means um, from a the patient, the patient identifiers, the things right. that you're not allowed to share or put out to people outside of the direct healthcare team. That's right. All those things that make uh, the, all those pieces of information that HIPAA is protecting, we make sure that none of those pieces of information are present on Figure One. And the way we do that is by giving the user tools like a, uh, the ability to just swipe their finger across the screen to erase the pixels that contain any names or numbers, or crop the image so that the corner of the ECG or X-ray uh, no longer has the patient's name or any numbers on it. Uh, in addition, there's a built-in consent form right in the app. So if your hospital uses a separate consent form, you can use that form. You don't have to use our form. But we've provided one that you can show to the user, uh, to the patient. And the patient can sign it right on the screen with their finger. Then, you can, then the app automatically emails it a copy to you and a copy to the patient. But figure one does not get a copy because the patient's name and signature are on that document. So you're maintaining, again, chain of custody there as well, um, only to the people that are required to have that information, exactly. which would be the patient and the person taking the photograph. Yeah, exactly. So um, then, after all those uh, things are done, the images are reviewed one more time by the figure one moderators before they're released into the public domain. Um, so we make sure uh, with uh, an extra fine zoom in lens that any of the numbers or characters on any image uh, are not names, they're not numbers, they're not birthdays, they're not uh, any of the uh, complicated eight, uh, list of 18 identifiers according to him. Right. 
Right. Now, and now this, you know, the app is free. Is there an op how are you funding this? Because obviously there's some back end, especially if you've got a moderated system set up for it. Um, it you know, I'm, I'm impressed with the app. It's incredibly um, robust and, and certainly very, uh, it, it looks like a great iPhone app. I mean, it, you know, from design and everything else. So what is it that, um, how is it that you're funding this? Is this uh, something that you're going to charge for eventually? Is there a pro option? Uh, so uh, we don't ever plan to charge our users for the experience that they're having right now. The goal is to be able to spread medical knowledge between medical professionals and even a 99 cent fee would get in the way of, of doing that. So that's not our goal. Um, right now we are not, uh, we don't have any revenue right now. Our, um, our investors, uh, we're, we're backed by a number of um, companies uh, who invest in tech businesses. Um, they've uh, told us that we should focus on making um, the best product for the most number of users possible. Uh, we'd like to reach more people and, and so making sure that it's free allows us to do that. Excellent. Excellent. Well, I applaud that and, and I certainly understand your point and, and, I, and I think it's an, an excellent way to uh, get this out there and make this available to people. Now, um, what if your facility or your employer doesn't allow you to photograph at all? I mean, there's a hard and fast policy against you taking out a smartphone in the presence of a patient and using it as a, as a camera at all. Um, what are the benefits of the app to you, even if you wanted to just download it and use it in another sense? Well, um, as you may imagine, as with all social media, um, most of the users are going on the app to look for interesting content and participate in discussions. Most people uh, who use Figure One aren't uploading images. And so if you're not permitted to do that by your hospital, we obviously encourage you to follow the rules of your hospital or, or clinic or university and, and not take those pictures of any people. Um, however, there's still lots of opportunity to get involved in discussion and there's lots of education. Um, that's more or less what I wanted to uh, focus on with Figure One is giving people the opportunity to see the images um, more than it was to create what is quickly becoming a very um, thorough almanac of all the visual findings in medicine. And I like that you can hashtag it. Um, there is a, the commenting function. Um, all of the social media things that you'd expect in a social app um, are there in this app, and um, it's amazing. Um, it's figure one, the number one, okay, figure one. Um, in your app store, both Google uh, Android devices as well as iOS devices. And um, they can also find more about it online at, oh, is it figureone.com, right? That's right, yeah. The numero that, one, yeah. That's amazing. So are there any kind of updates or things your guys are planning on the future, little add-ons you wish you could have gotten out in the first version? Yeah, absolutely. We're developing new features all the time. The next big release will be um, this summer, and what you'll start to see is people are going to be able to share uh, things that are that go beyond just still pictures. So I don't want to say too much about it, but it's going to uh, open up the the world of uh, medical educational content to all sorts of forms of media. Fantastic. Yeah. Sounds excellent. And I didn't point out, but I should point out, you have the ability to make your photos private to just your, your friends, so to speak, mm -hmm. um, not to the whole public um, access on Figure One. So you have that ability to restrict access to a small group if you want to. That's right. If you wanted to upload a picture just for your own reference or for the reference of a, a private group, those images will never be seen by anyone else on the app. They still have to be um, privacy safe and not contain any of the HIPAA identifiers, but those images will remain safely uh, with you. And if something slips through, people can actually flag an app to be re-reviewed by the moderators. That's right. Yeah, the flagging, I, I forgot to mention. We have, That's okay. We have so That's many, what I'm here uh, for. We have so many redundancies built into the system because we wanted it to be as safe as possible. So um, the way flagging works is if there's an image that uh, you uh, question whether or not it's educationally appropriate or whether you question if there's any possible privacy concerns or uh, if you have other concerns that uh, perhaps this picture should not be made pu public for any reason, you can flag it and the image automatically disappears from the feed and is prompted to be re-reviewed by the moderators. Uh, those images are occasionally restored if uh, they've decided to be okay or discarded 
um, if there's any concerns at all. And so you're really erring on the side of caution, erring on the side of protecting the patient, but still getting fabulous, excellent imagery out there from um, healthcare professionals all over the world. And we're talking about, you, you primarily started it for physicians and med students, but I can think of nurses, nursing students, um, instructors in all kinds of healthcare arenas, um, respiratory therapy and beyond, uh, really could get a lot of use out of this app. Mm -hmm. Well. That was one part of our thinking, was that this doesn't have to be limited to just uh, physician or physician track uh, individuals. We wanted to be able to put this in front of people who are going to be conducting frontline healthcare. So that means nurses and physiotherapists and pharmacists and uh, paramedics and people who see patients every single day. And more and more, uh, especially as time goes by, people aren't only receiving care from physicians. Many people are receiving primary care from physician assistants and nurse practitioners. So uh, these things um, didn't, there wasn't, it wasn't something that slipped our mind. It was a conscious decision to make sure as many people as possible could benefit from this education. Well, Josh, I want to thank you, uh, first of all, as a healthcare professional, for coming up with this excellent app and, and a great idea that has been a long time coming. Uh, I, I'm really looking forward to digging into it even more. I got a chance to look at it this morning before our interview, and um, I was so excited I almost forgot to dial you up. It was, uh, <laughs> so uh, it's, it's really great to look at. I can't wait to dig into it a little bit more and, and tell the rest of our audience about it. Oh, that's very kind. Thank you so much.